to uh, Extra Time Interviews. Uh, first, uh, first one of the series, I hope you guys like it. I have on today, uh, Mr. Paulo Del Piccolo, team captain for, uh, for Louisville State FC. Paulo, how are you doing today? Doing awesome. Well, thank you for, uh, for joining us. So let's go ahead and just jump right into things. Uh, before we start talking about the last match, uh, go ahead and get the coaching questions out of the way. So first off, I want to kind of get your initial um, thoughts and feelings when you heard about the departure of uh, Coach John Hackworth. Yeah, I mean, I, I always love playing for Hack. You know, we've had a good, a good run these last two years. So obviously you're bummed um, that he's leaving. I mean, you don't want to see anybody leave their job ever. So, right. and especially someone that, you know, he's, he's been very good to me over the last few years. So I think a lot of the guys like him, but this is soccer and, and, you know, we don't, we don't, uh, you know, our job is to be the players and, and their job is to be the coach and whatever, you know, so it's not really for us to, to know what happened. So, and we don't know, but right. uh, we, you know, we, I have nothing but love for hack. So. Well, that's good. Um, I guess in, in some ways you could kind of consider the silver lining is that coach Danny Cruz is going to kind of get a little, uh, yeah. little rain in charge, something well-deserved. I know he's kind of well-liked within the community. So um, what's the transition um, been like? Um, it's been pretty, it's been pretty seamless. I mean, again, you know, we're, we're players that know our job and know our role and uh, we have such a good locker room and guys that have been here for so long. I mean, you know, between myself and, you know, guys like Niall and, you know, Pat and Lexi, you know, we've been here forever and, and we know what's expected and what to do. So, you know, it's pretty easy for us to just come back into work and, and keep the standard high. And it's really easy playing for Danny because Danny was someone that is someone that everybody in the locker room really loves and really gets, gets on well with. Well, that's good to hear. Um, has anything changed with your practices or, or how you guys are approaching things or is he kind of keeping things uh, how they had been? No, not much has changed, to be honest, with the training. I mean, he has, uh, you know, a very similar philosophy to to hack. And, and so, you know, obviously he puts his, his fingerprints here and there be, like anybody would. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, but really not not much has changed drastically. No. OK, well, good deal. Um, I heard that you had a, um, a, a players only meeting uh, with the team after, uh, after you guys found out the news. Uh, I know obviously you probably can't talk about the contents of that meeting, but what was the, uh, what was the mood and the atmosphere like? Uh, and what was it for you guys kind of, I guess, processing this as a, as a full team? I mean, honestly, it's, this is kind of the, the great part about being in this locker room and, and stuff is that the mood is like, yeah, you know, whatever happens that we have no control over, it doesn't matter. All we can do as players is go out, do exactly what whoever the coaches asked us to do and, and try to win as many games as possible. And, you know, again, I think, like I said, everybody loves Danny and, and everyone's excited to, to just keep on this journey that, that, we are, that we're on. And, uh, you know, the, the mood's good. Guys are ready to go and guys are ready to play. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of veterans on on your on the team, including you know yourself, who was part of the the player coaching staff a few years back. So I'm sure if any any team could take it, it was you guys. Yeah, I'm glad it's been uh, been pretty seamless. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the first match of the season against uh, Atlanta United too, where you got two goals, pretty outstanding. Um, so you know, how are you feeling after that performance? Um, I'm feeling good. Obviously, I mean. Again, I've never been someone that scores a lot of goals, so to, to get two in one game was – it was definitely fun for me. Um, but, again, you know, I, I always wondered to myself, you know, would anything change, like, if I was the one scoring? Because I've always thought, like, oh, whoever scores doesn't matter, uh, just as long as the team won. And I was like, well, maybe I'm just saying that because I'm never the one that scores. <laughs> but but it, it, it is truly, like, you know, for me, I'm like, yeah, that was fun. It's good to do that. But – it was really good to, to win the first game of the year and, and start off with three points. So, you know, it, it was cool getting the goals, but again, I'm, I'm all about, I'm all about trying to get another trophy. That's that. Uh, that's icing on the cake for you. Just being yeah. able to get this. Um, I've noticed that you've been playing. It looks like a little farther up the pitch than you traditionally have. So I'm sure that's, that's definitely helped you. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Those goals. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so, I mean, despite being the more threatening side in the first half, there weren't any goals scored. So what was the, uh, what were the, was the coaching staff's messaging to you guys and the team during the, during the locker room? What kind of uh, adjustments did you guys feel you need to make to, to kind of overcome that, the draw you were currently in? I mean, it was, it was you know, sometimes you go into a, into a halftime talk and there's different ways to go about it. Sometimes they want to 
you know, if, if you come out sluggishly, you know, they want to talk about mentality or stuff, but, you know, honestly, they were, they were happy with the energy and, and what we were trying to do in the first half. I think we created enough chances to, to probably get a goal or two in that first half. We just did not And again, there's, you know, you know, shoot the ball in the goal isn't exactly a coaching point. So right. we came in and, and we, you know, we made some good adjustments to make sure we locked it down defensively because we gave up a couple counterattacks that were a bit too dangerous, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, so we made a couple adjustments there and then, you know, just, you know, kind of uh, highlighted some ways we could get at them and, and, it, and it paid off. Some more minor adjustments, nothing, uh, nothing massive then. Exactly. Yeah. So I guess kind of overall after the, um, after the end of the match, what was, uh, what was, that, how was everybody feeling? What were the overall thoughts, kind of some of the pros and cons of this first encounter? Uh, I mean, first of all, I mean, we've been, we've been in preseason since February one. So it was just really good to get a, to get a league game in, um, you know, really, you know, we had, we had great matches all throughout preseason. We went down, you know, we played a bunch of MLS teams. We played a bunch of league one teams which is, which was really good for us, but to get a really meaningful game where you're playing, you know, 90 minutes and not, you know, switching the full team at half or playing against an entirely new team at half, people were just happy to get that out and especially happy to get the three points out of it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so I, you know, I'm always excited to see younger players getting minutes and I thought particularly Jonathan Gomez and Akil Watts both did exceptionally well in this matchup. So, well, I mean, what did you make of um, of their play, not only in that match, but I guess kind of their overall development over the past two seasons? Yeah, it's tough. You know, it's because from the outside, you only get to see the games. Um, whereas, you know, for myself, who's played soccer with them every day for the last two years, it's just not surprising. You know, they've done so well. that They've trained so hard. They have such good you know, heads on their shoulders that, you know, when I see them come out, when I see them, you know, get their get their chance in the match and then they do well, you know, it's the first time you're seeing them really put a stamp on it. But for me, it's I've seen it for the last, you know, I don't know, for Akil, it's been almost two and a half years. For uh, Jogo, it's been a year and a half. So, you know, they're just progressing so well and, and they're such good players and such good guys that, you know, first and foremost, I'm just really happy for them. I really am genuinely happy to see him doing well, um, just like I am with everybody, but especially these younger guys, especially Jogo and Akil and, and Josh. And I can't wait for Elijah to be back because he was so good last year. And as soon as he gets back, he's going to he's gonna be great to have back on the pitch because he's a baller. I mean, you guys haven't seen him play yet, but he's a baller. So. Yeah, I was so disappointed when I saw about his, his injury. I was really looking forward to, uh, to seeing him get out there. You know, being the first uh, academy product to, to make it the first team was going to be really meaningful. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's going to be great. And he's, he's recovering so well. And, you know, he's, in the, he's first in the locker room every morning doing his exercises, and he's helping out the team. And, and he's, I can't wait till he's back. That's good to hear. Um, so we got some new signings in the squad, you know, Tyler, Jimmy. Um, how are they assimilating? And, and has the extended offseason kind of really uh, helped um, them gel more with the, the team? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's always going to help the, the longer preseason and stuff like that. But uh, honestly, you know, when Danny and Hacker are putting the team together, they do such a good job of, of really identifying the players that they want, the type of players that they want, and then – probably even more importantly, I, I don't want to speak for them, but the type of people they want. And so, you know, Jimmy's played with a number of us already. Uh, Tyler had as well. So he had, you know, familiarity with a lot of the guys in the locker room coming into it. And then on top of that, they're both just great people. I mean, really good people that are really fun to be around and, and really good players that are fun to play with. So. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to see the uh, the culture of uh, good people continuing. I've, we've always yeah. been lucky to have such uh, such great guys in the locker room. Yeah, they fit it perfectly. That's excellent. That's good to hear. All right. So next up, you got the Birmingham Legion, who uh, on paper I think is going to be kind of one of the uh, one of the top contenders in the group. I don't think they're necessarily better than Louisville City. So I guess kind of what's the team thinking about this matchup? What are uh, what are some of your I guess kind of concerns or, or things you're going to be watching in, in their play style? Well, I mean, they're, they're a good team. And the thing is, is there's, there's just no such thing as, as an easy game. I mean, mm-hmm. I even go back to last year, you know, people sometimes don't give credit to these MLS two teams, but Atlanta was good. They had some weapons on the first game. 
last year, you know, Kansas City, uh, we played them whatever it was, 250 times or whatever. They were good. You know, they ended up finishing bottom of the group, but they played some of the best soccer in the group. So there's no such thing as an easy game in the league. And, and, they've, and Birmingham, you know, doing the scout on the, all week and preparing for them. They've got some weapons. They've got some, some good, good players. They've got some, you know, good ideas. So it's, it's going to be a really, really tough match on the weekend. Um, I'm very excited for it. Um, I'm going to switch things up well, to kind of wrap things up. Got a few fun questions for you. First off is uh, what foreign teams uh, do you follow? Oh, AC Milan. They've been AC Mexican. Milan, really? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Paolo Del Piccolo, Paolo Maldini. So I was growing up, you know, I was the biggest Maldini fan, and, and I've, I've loved AC Milan ever since. So a little disappointed to see uh, Inter uh, crown champions this season then, huh? Yeah, that's a tough one to swallow, but uh, – I'll tell you what, we're right now, I mean, it's going to be the end of the year. I mean, I know Inter won the Scudetto, but there's about five teams fighting for the Champions League. So it's going to be a good end of the year for us if, if we can win a few games here. There you go. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. So what players like kind of, would you consider kind of influential or just players that you found fun to, to watch? Uh, yeah, I, I should have a better answer for this question, you know, because <laughs> I'm such a soccer fan. I, I take I – take, I try to steal from everybody. I mean, there's some players, you know, the fact that I, you know, can't jump over a a credit card and, you know, I'm (laughs) I'm slower than sound uh, or slower than smell. It doesn't help me. So, you know, I can't really like model my game after Neymar or anything, but you know, I watch, I watch defenders and I, I love how they tackle. I watch midfielders. I love how they pass. But for me, my, my absolute favorite player right now is definitely Verratti you know, for PSG. He's, mm-hmm. he's just such a good center midfielder. And I think if I had to pick one person that, you know, I, I want to play like, it's him. Very awesome. Cool. Um, so I know you guys have been going to some of the racing Louisville matches uh, at, at Lynn Family Stadium. Is, uh, what's that been like kind of being a fan in the stands, watching somebody else play while you get to kick back? Well, first, it was cool to see the stadium. I mean, I've, I've only ever done the trip from the locker room to the field. You know, but to just get up in the stands and in the suite and, you know, at halftime, I, I did a whole lap of the stadium just to check out everything that they got going. And, man, it's fun to see. And then, you know, the racing girls, obviously, I've, I've got a lot of ties to women's soccer with, you know, growing up in, in Denver. And, you know, Lindsay Haran is one of my, you know, best friends. So I watch, I watch her play as much as I can. And, you know, Mal is playing at Chicago now. So... Mm-hmm. You know, I've always been a fan of the women's game and, and to have a team here and to be able to watch them, it's, it's fun. Good. I'm glad you finally got to see the, uh, the full stadium. I never really kind of realized that you guys hadn't seen that. Yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, though. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was kind of cool being like, wow, this stadium's really cool for a fan. I've never seen it this way. Yeah, we're, uh, we're very lucky in Louisville. Not, not only yeah. have you guys, but they have the amenities that yeah. we do. So last question for you is I want to ask you about your number. You wear number 36. Is there a particular reason for that? Um, my guess was going to be uh, maybe it's tied to the uh, Wu-Tang Clan. Been a lot of chatter yeah. about that recently. That's spot on. So, I mean, when I was a little kid, I was wearing number three because of Paolo Maldini. And then, uh, I, you know, as I got a little bit older, first of all, you know, my, the first six years of my career, I was on six different teams. And it's pretty tough to join a team and get number three. But uh, – I've just always been a huge fan of the Wu-Tang Clan. You know, I've been to so many of their concerts. I, you know, I just, I love their music. I, 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 I re, you know, I've read Riz's book about 20 times. Um, and so obviously their, their, you know, first big album was Enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers. And I had a, you know, growing up, I had a Wu-Tang shirt that had a number 36 on the back. So I picked up 36 just as a little, Ode to the to the clan. I love it. I love it. That's yeah. a, that's a that's a fan. Uh, that's a that's a that's a fun backstory to to the number. I appreciate that. Yeah. Wu Tang forever. Woo. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you very much for joining me. I really do appreciate your time. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck in your match on Saturday and for the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. All right. You take care. Yeah. You as well.